we're here and we continue to grow and you know and you know the next sister that comes in as well she'll get in you know she'll be able to bond you know with us and grow with us as well but like i said a lot of people you know and that's and i and i think the most high that's nothing that we've ever experienced where it'd be like oh y'all know y'all just doing that for the camera yes, and, fake. and, and I, I'm not thank god that we never experienced that what's your name <laughs> what's your name you you gotta talk to the I'm a pawn in this game of life. We call chess that word that manifests. Dear Lord, I try my best to break the chains of flesh. Man gone now. All right, all right, all right. This is the second video of the day. We doing them back to back. To back? Mm -hmm. To back? Yeah. So we just got done doing the video. Um, oh, in case you ain't know, YouTube.com slash House of Judah. Definitely hit up ProPolyBook.com to get the book. Please like, share, and subscribe. <coughs> my wife's going to tell you later. You know what I'm saying? But this is the second video of the day. ProPolyBook.com. What was the last video called? ProPolyBook.com. <laughs> <laughs> what was the last video called? Introducing your... Kids to Polly. Introducing your kids to Polly. You know what I'm saying? So hopefully you all enjoyed that video. Oh, and yeah, you say what? Oh yeah, I got another color as well, as you can see. Shout out to my cousin Raz. Uh, so definitely designer him. Got the color, <laughs> turquoise on deck. Woo! Check it out, boy. Hey, hold up now. Boom! So yeah. You can definitely win a free jacket as well if you uh, send five people. We'll go ahead and send you out either a free book or a free jacket. And there's also other ways where you can get the whole outfit if you're interested. Let me know. We got different colors and more colors will be coming soon. So far we have about 13 colors released. Um, and more is coming soon. And with each one we got shoes and shirts and things like that that go with it why of course playing in the background as always you know you how do <laughs> so crazy <laughs> but um so yeah um we're gonna go ahead and get on started once again guys to get the book the unwritten rules of polygyny as you see on the front of the jacket you know what i'm saying at propolybook.com <laughs> oh yeah propolybook.com you know, we got the flag in the background for sale as well. You know what I'm saying? You know But, um, yeah, so, we doing these videos back to 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 back. Here we go. We're going to bring it out to Judah. Shall I say the Judettes? Boom. Yeah. Come on in, Judettes. That's right. You know what I'm saying? That's on my mama and your mama. And your daddy, too. And your daddy. That's right. Come on through, come on through, come on through. What's your beautiful ass ass? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Thanks for having, um, removing the molasses on your asses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we laugh and crack jokes on here, man. So that's what we do. That's what we do, ladies and gents. That's what we do. Uh, before we get started, I definitely want to shout out, uh, brother, want to read a comment. As y'all said, I'm going to start doing this a lot. Uh, shout out to the sister Dina Paget. Uh, this is four months ago. Uh, she said, um, "So much transparency in this teaching segment." Now, this was the video. Um, uh, Are you insecure? All right. So um, this is what she said four months ago again. So much transparency in this teaching segment. Most definitely a deeper definition of insecurity. Your wise are very transparent about the hiccups in the road and growth maturity transparency and love is displayed thank you for the teaching blessings house of judah king judah and queen <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of insider man shout out to my brother michelle man <laughs> Man, he'll make you not ever want to say queen no more, boy. Man, 
Man. How you doing, Queen? How you doing, Queen? Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Michelle, man. But anyway, uh, she say uh, King Judah and Queens of Judah have a beautiful day. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, oh, that's, that's basically what it all. is. And um, you know what I'm saying? So that was the first I want to shout out today. So with that being said, um, definitely uh, visit propolybook.com to get the book, The Unwritten Rules of Polygyny. For those of you or who are not familiar with the book or don't know what it's about, just look at all the videos on the channel. You see what it is. It's living proof, baby. You know what I'm saying, my boy? You know, go ahead and get the book. You know, you and your moms. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. What it up. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, look, we're going to go ahead and get started. So with that being said, uh, the House of Judah. Shalom. We are the sister wives of the House of Judah. You may know our Lord as Judah the Shooter. That's me. <laughs> Go ahead and hit that bell. Like, share, subscribe. In case you didn't know. Hit the bell for notification to be informed when we upload a new video. Bing. And that's on my mom's. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, shout out to my mom, too. You know what I'm mom. saying? Because, you know, my hey, mom, mom love y'all. Shout out to my mom. Hello, mom. We're going to send this to you. I love you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the gift that we sent you today. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, definitely love my moms. You know? So, yeah, y'all can thank her for creating such a handsome, just a handsome, handsome young man. You know what I'm saying? So, that's to my mom. Shout out to my pops. What's up, dad? Because I know you probably going to see this too, as well. You know what I'm saying? All praises, dad, for creating such a handsome individual. You know what I'm saying? So. Absolutely, you know what I'm saying, but absolutely. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Thank you, Dad. <laughs> Thank you. Nah, right, come on. Let's go ahead and get started. So, uh, yeah, um, this is the second video of the day. What are we talking about? Talk to me. All right. Um. So, just to for the sister that commented four months ago, this video is very transparent. Just because you leave, don't mean nothing. You're still a wife. Oh snap! Is our title for today? <laughs> so, so we finna. That's what we doing. That's what we doing. So that's what we finna do. That's what we finna do. Oh jeez! All right, well fuck it. Let's run it on the ass. Let's then. run Let's it. Get it. <laughs> All right. So today again, our video. Wait, we, what's the name of this video? Just because you leave, don't mean nothing. You're still a wife. Well, I might put it in. I might put in uh, the word raw in parentheses. Runaway wives. That's gonna be the <laughs> yeah. same. Runaway wives. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, this is uh I talk about this in the book too as well. Yeah, you have a lot of women that Jeez. um are runaway wives. They will leave their husband for their own selfish reasons and then they'll go change their identity and somehow become the Virgin Mary. No lie. End, <laughs> end up pregnant. Video coming soon. I just got done talking um, about this. Real quick. So many. Cause she mentioned uh, Marys. So basically, in the sense of without dealing with doctrine, you know, um, a woman having a baby out of the blue, you know what I'm saying? You'll get these, oh, you know, I'm taking it slow. And you know, they have a baby out of the blue. It's like, yo, well, where's the daddy at? No, there's the daddy ain't around to sit and claim the baby. You yeah, know, so I guess Joseph just put you away privately, huh? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, uh, shout out to the Merry Body Israels. <laughs> Having miracle babies out of the blue world. Shout out to mom. <laughs> <laughs> the telling the man, oh, As he was saying. Telling the man, oh, I'm not saying anybody, you know. But all of a sudden, he's pregnant. Jeez. Anyway, not this video. That's a video to come. To oh, come. man. To come. Yeah. Very soon. Jeez, y'all just putting foot the next, huh? Yeah, like, I'm just, we, we are getting tired of it. And we are no longer going to be silent about these these wicked women yeah because i was talking about that what made y'all pick this topic because boy you, some wicked woman oh you, you, you didn't had you the wives to make a video i see what you're trying to do <laughs> uh, it's not a one yeah. one particular person it's a lot of them that fit in this box and no i'm talking about in a general sense you know how they, they're probably yeah. feeling guilty look, yeah, they're feeling guilty I, look, hold on disclaimer this is hey they picked this on their own so hey let's yeah, run it this, this is ours on our own 
Um, so again, um, we are putting our foot in these wicked women necks. Mary's. So these Mary by Israel mm -hmm. and any any many more. I'm gonna take y'all to Ecclesiasticus, also known as Sirach, mm -hmm. 25 and 24. So, for those of you who do not know, because I do know there are some people who watch that are not Bible believers. If you get the original King James Version Bible, you have uh, 14 books in there known as what you know as the Apocrypha, which is just a title. It means hidden a secret. You see it right there, it says authorized King James Version on it. Uh, but anyway, long story short, it's also known as Ecclesiasticus and also known as the Book of Sirach. There are other versions that have the Apocrypha books in it. The Geneva Bible has it in there. You have the NRSV version, Oxford Study <coughs> Bible, which uh, I believe uh, Angela has over there as well. So there are other uh, versions of the Bible that contains uh, the Apocrypha. I don't really like to use the word Apocrypha, but that's a whole other topic without getting into doctrine. But anyway, uh, so yeah, so what's up? You said Sirach 25 or yeah, Ecclesiasticus? Yeah, we're going to go Ecclesiasticus 25 and 24. And 24? Yes. Go ahead and run it then. What's up? Talk to him. Of the woman mind? came the beginning of sin. Read it again. Of the woman became the beginning of sin. Mm -hmm. And through her, we all die. We all what? We all die. Jeez. All right. Talk to so, him. So, I mean, for you Bible believers, you guys know how Eve is our mother of sin. Mm -hmm. We know it came through her. So, we... We wicked. We are wicked creatures. We're wicked, wicked beings until you turn away from all of that. Yeah. So with this, with this lesson today, we're gonna go into the fact that our women find any reason. Oh, he not working. He not making no money. He not taking care of me. He not cleaning up the kitchen. He not. I can't use that word. He's not sexting me. <laughs> he not sexting me the way I want. He got all these women. He talking to this woman, this woman. You find any, 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 any reason to leave this man. But you can't. You still a wife. Unless that man gave you a bill of divorce, you're still his possession. You're still his property. You're still his. Just told a woman this the other day. You're still his at the end of the day. Just because you packed your bags. <laughs> and left and then you want to tell everybody oh well he put me out or we were never married there was no paperwork video coming soon sign up um you can't you can't do that so we're gonna go ahead and go to romans seven let's get it verses two and three so we're going to buy them all yeah, we're going we're going today we're not <laughs> today we're gonna lose some followers Push the next and fuck you all if you don't like it. <laughs> Today we're gonna lose some followers. And we, we, we cool with that. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> we don't. Man, I got, all right. I got this drink at uh, Walmart. It's called I don't give a fuck. Coming to Super Large, Deluxe, <laughs> all that. All of it. And that's on your mama. <laughs> and then you go walk around the corner to, to find the F. I, I don't give. Exactly. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> chapter 7, <laughs> verse 2. Let's get it. For the woman which had a husband mm -hmm. is bound by law to her husband. For how long? So long as he lives. No, so long as he do what I say. As he lives. So long as I get my way. As he lives. Wow, so as long as he's alive. All right, come on. But if the husband be dead. No, if the husband just be dead wrong and he ma made me mad. <laughs> but if the husband be dead, uh -huh. no breath in his body, mm -hmm. she is loose from the law of her husband. Mm, so, I mean, yeah, hey, look, sisters, we know some of y'all are already loose. But ain't talking about that loose. <laughs> He talking about that little sus. He said you're loose, meaning you are set free from the law to your husband. Why? Because he's no longer breathing. Go ahead. Verse 3. Mm -hmm. So then if while her husband lived. So this is talking about the husband who is still alive. Right? She be married to him, another man. Oh, well, you know, that made me mad, so, you know, I wouldn't count her. another one, you know. We ain't been talking in years, so, you know, that that ain't my husband no more. Read the verse say again. <laughs> That's how they be thinking, though. Yeah. 
I need some more dick than the one he gave me. <laughs> that just ain't gonna work. Lord, the dick you gave him just ain't working. <laughs> hey, I'm just gonna keep it real. Hey, look, we, hey, I ain't religious, you know, so you ain't finna get that Sorry, religion kids, talk over here. You heard me? Hey, Sister tell your kids to go. Get out. You know what I'm saying? Watch your own is, discretion. Your discretion is advised. You know, I cut. Hide your kids. Hide your wife. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm just gonna let you know right now. This ain't no religious. You know, I'm not a religious bro. You know, yeah. cultural and spiritual. You know what I'm saying? Like when my brother Judah Max say, live your real life and apply the commandments. Kind of, yeah. That's what I'm with, man. So shout out to my brother. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, so go ahead and read that again. Yeah. So then, if while her husband live it, mm-hmm. she be married to No, her. if your husband live it to, with another man and another woman. What? What'd he say? <laughs> 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 Come on. She be married to another man. Mm-hmm. She shall be called an adulteress. Notice it says she. She shall be called an adulteress. Mm, says nothing about the man, but hey, that's what it is. Go ahead. But if her husband be dead. If he be what? Dead. No, if he got another woman. Dead. Uh huh. She is free from the lo- that law, so that she is no adulteress. Though she be married to another man. Let's go ahead another scripture. I don't know if y'all got it. First Corinthians 7. Do y'all have that? No. Okay, cool. First Corinthians 7, 39. Let's go ahead it real quick. Say the same thing. First Corinthians chapter 7. Let's go ahead and get it. Verse 39. The hmm. wa- go ahead. The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband lives. Start over. What that say? The wife is bound by the law mm-hmm. as long as her husband lives. So you see that? There it is again. She is bound by the law of her husband for how long? As long as her husband lives. But no, until I get in my feelings. As long as he lives. As long as he lives. He, he didn't ask me to take another wife. <laughs> how long? As long as, as long as he lives. Okay, go ahead. But if her husband be dead. No, if he, if he in a different city. If he be dead. If he be what? Dead. Uh huh. Go ahead. She is at liberty to be married to whom she will. So this is saying she's at liberty, meaning she is at freedom to marry what? Whom she will. Only what? Only if he's dead. Mm-hmm. No, but keep continue. Only, oh, okay. Only in the Lord. Only in the Lord. All right. So, yeah, I just want to grab it as well. You know, so I'm about to throw you off. Mm-mm. All right, go ahead. Let's get it. So, yeah, that, that's just showing us right there. Sisters, you can't put him away. You can't divorce him. Yeah, I got put that, you away. But... Yeah, I got that one in Mark 10. Mm-hmm. All right, let's grab that. Mark 10 and 12. What are they? Mark 10 and 12. Hey, hey, don't call me Judah Shooter for no reason, boy. Hey, <laughs> you said we're going to run it on him. Let's run it on him then. <laughs> Mark chapter 10. Let's see what the Messiah said. These are for those who believe in what we call the New Testament today. Uh, What what color is that written in? It's in red. Hey, it's in blood. blood. You know, so let's get it. And if a woman shall put... This is the scripture. That's what you're looking for? Oh, yeah, this is actually king. You see that? And if a a woman shall put away her husband... Uh Uh-uh, nigga, bye. (laughs) Because you get sisters, if he get another wife, I'm gone. All right. Well, look. Check this out, sus. What it say? Uh, if a woman, if it, I'm sorry, and if a woman shall put away her husband, uh-uh, you got to go. It's just gonna be me and only me. I'm the only HBIC in this MFR. <laughs> go ahead. And be married to another. Huh. To the left. To the left. <laughs> she committed adultery. She committed what? Adultery. Boy, look. Don't act like we don't see this. Look, the sisters will get rid of these men and. And we'll put him out with his PlayStation 4 and his trash bags <laughs> and his damn uh, shoe boxes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you know, Tell brother. You know, yeah, I'm gone with your Fortnite game or whatever this <laughs> 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 oh I'll play all day. <laughs> and he be gone. You know what I'm saying? Now, brothers, now I will say, on the contrary, if you're tired of, you know, getting kicked out with the trash bags and stuff. Look, come on, holler us, bro. Let's help you get your credit together so, you know, you can boss up. And then you can, like, no, you go then, woman. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, you get your own stuff, get your car, whatever it is you're looking for. 
Let us help you, brother. Your credit is 640. Come on, man. Let's do better than that. Yeah. <laughs> man, right. 640 is trash. Anyway. Yeah. Um, hey, you know. Hey. Hey. Everybody can't be in the ace, B. No. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, let's wow. continue. Let's read the verse. <laughs> let's read the verse again. What did it say? Martin and 12. <laughs> <laughs> and if a woman shall be shall put away her husband, I'm gonna put his ass out and be married to another. Uh huh. She committed adultery. Yeah, sister, so, so we already know it. You know, old Ron John been in your stomach, and now <laughs> this of uh, this new guy. You know, he got. You know, he give you butterflies in your stomach, but he ain't like last guy. So you gonna get rid of him? And oh well, you know, I didn't know we were married. And, you know, he was the king on the earth, but then when he wouldn't put up with my bullshit, I couldn't manipulate him with my tears. And nigga had to go. <laughs> yeah, we know it, sis. It's your goofy ass. Let's go ahead. Let's get it. Yeah, this is going to be a tough love video today. Let's get it. <laughs> all right. Now, we all know. Hey, we talking about we serious, though, but come yeah, on. Yeah, like real talk. We all know um, that. We as women, we are the possession of our husbands. Um, so we're going to hit a couple of scriptures that go over us being the possession and go from there. Um, the first one is Genesis 3 and 16. Right. Better sheets in the beginning for you Hebrew readers out there. So let's go ahead and get that. Go on to the book of Genesis in the beginning. So, Sefer Bereshit of the book of Genesis. Yes, the book Mm-hmm. Are y'all ready? Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Until the woman, he said, I will, Go ahead. I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, mm. and he shall rule <laughs> over thee. So... Um, in the Hebrew text, I see the word uh, yimshal, which has the root word mashal, and that means to govern, to rule, to reign over. And notice it said, your desire shall be to your husband. Oh, I love you, baby. I want you. I lust for you. I want you. But he going to rule over you. Yes, I read the Hebrew language. You know what I'm saying? So I'll follow along in the Hebrew text. Uh, Say Which one? I want you! I want you! I want you, baby! I want you! No filter, none. None. No filter. Yeah. <laughs> hey, and the book is like that too, though. You know, one minute I'm being intellectual, and the next minute I'm cussing you out. So, I mean, it is what it is. So, I mean, it's how I am in real life. So, you know, it's what it is. I still love you. Right. <laughs> For real. Period. Yeah. Period. Exclamation point. You know what I'm saying? You know, with that being said, of course. No, I gotta tell you, get the shoes, don't you know what I'm saying? On all our mamas. You know, yeah. But let's get it. So, that was Genesis 3 and 16. Notice it said, uh, your desire or your want shall, or your lust shall be from your for your husband, but he's gonna control you, he's gonna rule over you. Yep. It is what it is. I didn't write that. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. <laughs> let's get it. What's next? All right, the next scripture is gonna be Sarah. Uh, 36 and 24. All right, so this is going back into what you know, brothers and sisters, as the Apocrypha, Ecclesiasticus, also known as Sirach, S-I-R, if you will. All right, so what chapter you want? 36. 31? 36. 36? Okay, cool. 36. All right, let's go ahead. Starting uh, 22. 22? Mm -hmm. Okay. The beauty of a woman cheered the countenance. You see that, brothers and sisters? It says the beauty of a woman does what? Cheer it the countenance. Cheer it the countenance. Think about it. Well, what are some of the faces a brother may see if he see a pretty woman? He, he. Yeah. Right? So it says the beauty of a woman cheer it the what? The countenance. The countenance. That comes from the Hebrew of panim. Now, panim can mean face, but it also means presence or your appearance, if you will. 
All right, so in the Hebrew text, because believe it or not, in Sepharia.com, there's an apocrypha in Hebrew as well. But that's another topic. So far as the Hebrew world was means library. But anyway, it says the beautiful woman cheereth the countenance or his appearance. I mean, he see that pretty woman, you're like, ooh, I just seen a pretty woman today. Didn't I? Absolutely. Let's get it. <laughs> and uh, a man loveth nothing better. Brother, don't feel bad about you seeing a pretty woman and acknowledging that. You know, you don't have to be slick, you know, like uh the brother be holding this woman and whatnot. He turned around, man, that woman looks stupid. Meanwhile, he looking like, dang, yeah. she is fine. Yeah. Come on, bro. Stop all that. We, we know that when we see a beautiful one, we acknowledge that. No different from how Jacob, when he wanted Rachel. I mean, come on now. Like, look, it's what it is. You know, so, yeah, that's just what it is. I ain't, look, I will go all day on that. But anyway, it says, and a man love nothing better. You a man, right? Okay, cool. It says, a man, which will be technically you, hopefully. Uh, <laughs> says, love nothing better. You know, it's at the top of the list. Numero uno. Mm -hmm. Let's get it. If there be kindness. If. Keyword. Mm-hmm. Meekness. Mm-hmm. And comfort in her tongue. Absolutely. Kind of like Proverbs 31. In her mouth is the law of kindness. Go ahead. Then is not her husband like other men. Absolutely. Hopefully. <coughs> Go ahead. He that getteth a wife. So whoever gets a wife. Beginneth a possession. Now we all know the scripture that say, He that find a wife findeth a good thing. Listen right here, say, What? He that getteth a wife, what? Beginneth a what? A possession. A what? A possession. What's a possession? That's something that what? That you own. That you own. It's something that you own. Mm -hmm. You know, so for those of you who think that that is, oh no, you spilled your coffee. If you look at the scripture in Proverbs 31 when it says, Who can find a virtuous woman for a price is far above rubies? But it goes in the next verse that the heart of her husband do a safely trust in her so that he should have no need of spoil. When you look the word husband up in the, uh, for you concordance scholars, well, if you read Hebrew, it's the word bala, but for you concordance people, you'll click on it and it has the word um, baal, a bell, and it means lord, owner, sovereign, a master. You know what I'm saying? So it letting you know right there, owner. Master controller. Now on my on my regular YouTube channel, I did that video Daughters of Zion versus Daughters of Satan. Mm -hmm. And I kinda go over that, you know what I'm saying? But you know, you can watch it if if course obviously if your husband or whoever you court and give you permission to watch that. You know what I'm saying? But that's on my channel. Mm -hmm. But go ahead. A help like unto himself. A what? A help like unto himself. No, a controller. A help. Like unto himself. So this help is an assistant. So whatever he needs help with and assistant assistance with, that's your job. Why? Because it said a help like unto who? Unto himself. Unto himself. So it's not what you want, it's what he wants. It's a help like unto himself. You are his reflection. Alright? Well, well I want to do well, you ain't fulfilling your purpose then, sis. You're not fulfilling your purpose. But go ahead, and what else is you? And a pillar of rest. Notice it says a pillar. A pillar is like on the front of a building, right? It it does what? It holds up a structure. All right. Without that pillar, the building will fall. No different from how we seen a wise woman building her house, but a foolishness what? Foolish woman plucking it down with her hands. Y'all learned that in the last video. But it said this type of woman is considered to be a pillar, right? It's what you would say in uh, modern times. She's the backbone of the family. Big mouth. <laughs> <laughs> But it says a pillar of what? Rest. Stress? Rest. Anguish? Rest. rest. Her mouth. Rest. So that woman is a pillar of rest. She is the pillar of comfort. When it comes to rest and comfort, you, you that woman being your sanctuary, she is a direct reflection of that. She is a pillar of it though. Right? So like it's like when uh it's kind of like your brothers when you sneak around on your woman, you know, she bitching and complaining. And what do you do? You go to your side woman, why? Because that woman is your pillar of rest. She's your, your, your safe space, your comfort zone. This woman is that, is what it's saying. So sisters, is that you? Huh? Wow, I think the figure says, is that you? Uh? <laughs> 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 Ooh, well, go ahead, what else? <laughs> Was that it or you wanted more? 
No, that was it. All right. Well, what are we doing next? What's up? Talk to me. Um, the next one is Ruth. Hold on. First, grab uh, Ciroc 726 real quick. Okay. Yeah. Ciroc 7, also known as Ecclesiasticus, chapter 7. Mm -hmm. And we're going to grab that 26. Now, starting 24. Okay. Go ahead. Has thou daughters? So that's a question that is asking. Do you have daughters? Go ahead. Have a care of their body. Oh, their natural being or their well-being. Don't you care for that? Go ahead. And shall not thyself cheerful towards them. Boy, that's how I am. Boy, my baby, my baby. Daddy's <laughs> girl. You know how I right. say that. What else? Marry thy daughter. Mm-hmm. And so shalt thou have performed the what we matter. So marry your daughters off, in other words, and you perform the weighty matter, a very important thing, something that's very weighty. This is a very important thing. But what, though? But give her to a man of understanding. A man that drives rent with on rims. <laughs> of understanding. So give it to not just any man, you give it to a man of understanding. All right. And uh so Rock 19 let you know uh um somebody grab that right quick. Somebody else who got the pocket for so Rock 1929. Somebody grab that real quick. Go ahead, read that verse again. Um Marry thy daughter. Uh-huh. And so shalt thou have performed a weighty matter. Go ahead. But give her to a man of, of understanding. A man of what? Understanding. So, brothers, you may say, well, how do I know he's a man of understanding? Go ahead, Judy. A man may be known by his look. He may be known by what? His look. Don't judge a book by his cover. He may be what? He may be known by his look. Uh-huh. And one that have understanding by his countenance. You see that? So, brothers, you should be able, you can see it. Well, the way he carries himself, his countenance, his appearance. Mm -hmm. When thou meetest him. When you what? Meetest him. There you go. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? All right, go ahead. We back in we back in rotation with the grab. Um, we're going on to root four. Mm-hmm. And ten. Root four and ten? Mm -hmm. Alright. So we still in the script, ladies and gents. We're going to the book of Ruth. You know, for those who never uh picked up the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, and then Ruth. Chapter four and what verse you say? Ten. Alright, cool. Come on with it. Let's run it. Moreover, Ruth the Moabitess, mm -hmm. the wife of is my line. Uh huh. Have I purchased to be my wife? Uh huh. Have I what? Purchased to be my wife. So here it is. He's showing here that she is what a possession. All right. He's he's barred. Go ahead. To raise up the name of the dead mm -hmm. upon his inheritance, mm -hmm. that the name of the dead be not cut off from among his brethren. Mm -hmm. And from the gate of his place, ye are witness this day. Absolutely, they witnessed it. So, all right, what we got next? Um, Exodus 20. All right, the 17. book of Exodus, Shemot, or Sephiroth, Shemot. Exodus 20. <clears throat> so this is where, uh, for those of you who don't know, never picked the Bible up, this is where the Ten Commandments was given up on Mount Sinai, ladies and gents. So we're going to Exodus chapter 20. And we're going to read the 10th commandment, which is in verse 17. Mm -hmm. All right. What says, Lo tachmod bet re'eka, lo tachmod eshet re'eka, va'avdu va'amatu, v'shoro v'chamoro, v'kal ashet le re'eka. Which says, you should not cover your neighbor's house. Right? Then it says, you should not cover your neighbor's wife. <laughs> then it says, uh, it says, uh, nor your neighbor's manservant, but Amato, nor his maidservant, the Shoro, nor his ox, the Kamoro, nor his donkey, the Kar, a Shir, Lereka, nor anything that is your neighbor. All right, so letting you know right there is showing possession. So it's kind of like, um, because uh, I get the question, well, I ask people the question, well, if religion is a sin, why didn't it include the husband? So they'll say, well, when it said wife, uh, your neighbor's wife is talking to everybody. No, it's not, brother. I read Hebrew. You're not finna run that on me. You know what I'm saying? So it didn't it didn't uh forget to say, um, oh yeah, let me go back to that verse. Uh amato, the root word ama, which is uh a maid servant, a, a, a slave. Yeah. It didn't forget to say that. But then after that it says, um, what? Let me go back before that. Um, here we go. Va'avdu. Nor his manservant. This is a man slave worker. So it, it so it said manservant and maidservant. It, it addressed the man and the woman, but it only said wife in this text. 
but it never said husband. That don't even make sense, bro. If religion is a sin. If religion is a sin, it should have said, um, when it said, uh, wait, let me go back. Uh, when it says low talk mode is shit reeka, right there, you should not cover your neighbor's wife. It should have said no talk mode ish reeka. You know, ish is a husband. It didn't say that. It didn't say ish. It said isha, which is a woman or wife. Let's us know that she's what. This is some. Uh, this is a, a woman that belongs to him because at the end of the verse it says because I share a little reeka, nor anything that is your fellow. Or your neighbors letting you know that this is something that belongs to him now that's from the Hebraic perspective that's just what it is you can't argue that ain't no getting around that there's no getting around that you know what I'm saying so you see what it says right there in Exodus 20 and 17 you know there's no getting around that Somebody go ahead and read that in English for me, please. Exodus 20 and verse 17 again. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Uh-huh. So it's his. What else? Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Which also is his. Go ahead. Nor his man servant. No, who? His. His. Man. His. What? Man servant. So you see that? The one who works for him. I did lessons on this as well. What else? Nor his maid servant. Look at that. It mentioned the male and female servant. Go ahead. Nor his ox. Nor his ox. What else? Nor his ass. Nor his donkey. Nor anything. Nor what? Anything. That what? That is thy neighbor. Your what? Thy neighbor. So you see that? That's a symbol of possession. He owns. All right. What's next? Talk to me. All right. So the last one I have um, is Genesis 16. Mm-hmm. Uh, verse 8 and 9 Alright, talk to me This is the story of Sarah and Hagar Ladies and gents In case you have not read the story Alright, Genesis 16 <coughs> Verse uh, 8 and 9 Alright, we'll give you a little second to go ahead and get that Alright, go ahead And he said, Hagar mm -hmm. uh, Sarai's maid Uh huh Whence camest thou? Like, whence comest thou? Where are you coming from? And whither wilt thou go? And where are you going to go? And what did she say? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress. Now, I've talked about this in one of our videos, that mistress is not, in, in, in the Bible, is not a secret woman. All right, it comes from the Hebrew geberet, or gebereth, depending on which dialect of Hebrew you're uh, dealing with, or geberoth. Um, that's dealing with a lady, mistress, a uh, head woman in charge. You see the root word gabar, gaber, or gaber, whichever dollar behavior you're dealing with. Uh, that's dealing with one who's mighty, you know what I'm saying? So, this would be today you would call the head woman in charge, uh, dealing with a sense of hierarchy, you know what I'm saying? One over the other, all right? So, we let we learned earlier, Nexus 2017, or the maid servant, you know what I'm saying? She, would, of course, would have been a maid servant that also was a wife when you read earlier in the chapter. I've done a lesson on this on my channel. Different topic, though, but go ahead. Read that again. And he said, Hagar, Sarai's maid, when camest thou, mm -hmm. and whither wilt thou go? Where are you going to go? Go ahead. And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress. So right there, she was in her feelings, took off, left, right, became a runaway wife. If you will, she was a raw. <laughs> <laughs> she was a runaway wife. She was a raw. Go ahead. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, "Return." To Do thy what? Return. No, nah, keep it. Keep keep going. Go. <laughs> continue on your journey. <laughs> <laughs> Return. <laughs> Return. Go ahead. To thy mistress. And do what? And submit. And her. what? Submit. Do what you want to do. Submit. Submit. <laughs> Go ahead. Thyself under her hand. Mm-hmm. Because remember, she was the giveret, right? The head woman in charge. It's a, it's a hierarchy type of poly situation now. Mm -hmm. But that was it? Or you want to continue? That was it. Okay, yeah. That's what it was. You know what I'm saying? What we got next? So the next thing we are going to talk about is maintaining your husband. Mm-hmm. And we are going to read Sirach. Uh... 
25, 13 through 25. Because ladies and gents, this is another misunderstood passage in the Bible. Guess what, wicked ladies? Your ass is mine. <laughs> <laughs> Your ass is mine. Your ass is mine. Hey. <laughs> so when you read Sirach or Ecclesiastes chapter 25 and chapter 26, you have the contrary. On the one side, you have the wicked woman. And then on the other side, you have the, um, the, the, um, what am I looking for? The virtuous woman. All right. Uh, the woman that's a blessing, if you will. So this is, um, chapters 25, if you will. Uh, first do me a favor, read verse 13 real quick. For me, love. Um, now this is from the, uh, the, uh, Oxford, Oxford Study Bible as well. Now remember, safari.com, you can get this in the Hebrew language. It was nice too. But anyway, another topic though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so like 25, what does it say? Any wound but a wound in the heart. Because mm -hmm, remember the King James Version say, give me any plague but the plague of the heart or the mind. Go ahead. Any malice but a woman. Or any wickedness but what? A woman. Ooh. Remember say but the wickedness of a woman. All right, so when you look at your King James Version, it's giving an expression of what is actually being said. Mm -hmm. But another topic, uh, do me a favor, jump down to uh, 16 real quick. I would sooner live with a lion or a serpent mm. than share a house with a malicious wife. Read that again. I would sooner live with a lion or a serpent mm. than share a house with a malicious wife. Don't the King James Version say, I'd rather dwell or live with a lion and a dragon than to keep house? With a wicked woman? Go ahead. Now we see that woman is malicious. Ra ah, evil. Her Go spite ahead. changes her expression. Her what? Her spite Ooh. changes her expression. Somebody want to elaborate on that? Her spite changes her expression? The wickedness of a woman changes her face? Uh, I guess her being spiteful, it, you know, it shows what kind of spirit she is. <laughs> How she be looking? Evil. Just mad. Yeah. You can see it on her face. And then you, ah, what's wrong, baby? Nothing. But we can see it all on your couch and it's your appearance. Girl, like uh, what Kendrick say? I can feel your energy. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, like, girl, we can feel it. Yeah, we know you, your feelings, you're probably your feelings yeah, right now. Okay, yeah. <laughs> you're probably in your feelings right now and listening to him. <laughs> yes. Written all over yeah. your face. He probably broke. <laughs> you know how it is. <laughs> you don't Go ahead. Her spite changes her expression, uh -huh. making her look as surely, surly as a bear. Ooh. A bear. As a bear, like yeah. sackcloth. <laughs> right. Man. <laughs> right. Go ahead. Her husband goes to a neighbor for his meals mm -hmm. and cannot repress a bitter sigh. Ooh. It's like when, when, when you're among your people and you she comes. Right. Go ahead. There is nothing so bad as a bad wife. Mm. May the fate of the wicked overtake her. Ooh, wait, read that again. There is nothing so bad as a bad wife. What kind of wife? A bad wife. Mm -hmm. Come on. May the fate of the wicked overtake her. Just like in verse 19 in the Standard King James, it says, All wickedness is but little wickedness to the wickedness of a woman. That the portion of a sinner fall upon her. Now Romans six and twenty three says the wish of sin the wish of sin is death. Death. All right, let's continue. So we see a portion. Go ahead. It is as easy for an old man to climb a sand dune. Ooh. As for a quiet husband to live with a gorilla's wife. Ooh wee. So you see that? Read that one more time. It is easy for an old man to climb a sand dune. Because it says that the climbing up of a sandy way, so is the feet of the age. As, so, go ahead. As for a quiet husband to live with a, I think it's garrulous wife. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, so let you know, uh, so is the wife full of words to a quiet man nagging. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Uh hold that real quick. Somebody um somebody else grab Proverbs 27 and 17 real quick. I know y'all ain't got that on there. I can feel it. <laughs> you know, I dig down in the arsenal, come back with the AR like ah! <laughs> Proverbs 27, verse 17, what that say? Uh, 
iron sharpens iron. I mean, it's 15, my bad. Go ahead. 27, 15? Mm-hmm. A continual dropping. A continual what? Dropping. So that's when the rain just keep going, dropping rain. Go ahead. In a very rainy day. Uh-huh. Now, um, what does a rain sound like when it's continual dropping, when it's pouring down? It's what? Wow. Go ahead. Um, and a contentious woman what is a contentious that's a woman that's starting conflict brawling yeah. mm -hmm. a woman that's contentious a contentious woman or what alike they both are what loud on and on and on just a continual dropping just won't stop proverbs 21 proverbs uh nine real quick proverbs 21 and nine what it say it just won't stop it is better to dwell in a corner mm -hmm. of the housetop. Right, so it's better to dwell in the corner of what? The housetop. Than what? Than with a brawling woman in a wide house. Woo! So what you got a big house? You got a brawling woman in it. Ooh, it don't mean nothing. Uh, Go ahead and read verse uh, 19. Same in chapter? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, it is better. Uh -huh. okay. Go ahead. It is better to dwell in the wilderness. It's better to live in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> than with a contentious and angry woman. Look at that. Ooh wee, is that you, sis? <laughs> is that you? Huh? Proverbs 9 and 13? Is that you? Let's see. What's Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 13 said? In the lips of him. No, Proverbs 9 and 13. A foolish woman is clamorous. A foolish woman is what? Clamorous. Clamorous. That means she's loud. Disturbance, a great tumult. Mm hmm. Hmm. What else? She is simple. She is smart. Simple. And what else? And knoweth nothing. She don't know nothing, girl. Hush. Head you know. Strong woman. Right. Head strong. Let's go on here. Go back to uh, Ecclesiasticus or Sirach twenty-five again, love. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's go ahead and uh continue. Uh, verse 21. Go ahead. Do not be Because there's something that's interesting in this verse that I read in the Hebrew New Testament uh, about the word pleasure. Mm -hmm. I thought that that meant like something else. Like uh, like uh, in this context, I thought it was talking about like sex, mm -hmm. but it was talking a woman's wealth. wealth. Right. Mm -hmm. yep. I didn't know that until I actually read in the Hebrew text. I was like, ew, this ain't talking about what I thought that it was talking about. It was a wealth. Now, I don't know what it says in there, um, but... It, it, it should be pretty close. <coughs> Does it say it in there? What verse is that? Uh, 22? If it means the Bible class, 21? No, no, no. Uh, yeah, 21. Yeah, 21. Yeah. Verse 21? Yes. Oh, okay, read it. Yeah, read it. So they can see. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You read it to yourself. I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Do not be enticed by a woman's beauty or set your heart on possessing one who has wealth. So right there. So this is talking about in a sense of not acknowledging her, but bro, you can't even focus. You, 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 you. It would be equivalent to you driving down the street and then you running into a, a damn stop sign because you see this woman. You know what I'm saying? But go ahead, read that verse again. Do not be enticed by a woman's beauty, mm -hmm. or set your heart on possessing one who has wealth. Who has what? Wealth. Wealth. That's what that actually is talking about. You know what I'm saying? So, but go ahead, continue. If a man is here, we go. Go ahead, because the part here uh, it says uh, a woman, if she maintain her husband, is full of anger, impudence, and much reproach. Let's see what this is talking about, because if you didn't know, ladies and gents, when you read verse 13 on down, this is talking about a bad wife, an evil wife, not a regular wife. This is the first thing you have to know and understand. In this chapter, it's talking about a wicked wife. So, woman, if this is you, then you wicked. All right, so let's go ahead and read that, though. Come on with it. 22. If a man is supported by his wife, mm -hmm. he must expect tantrums. Oh, so here we go. He must expect what? Tantrums. What else? Infantry. Uh huh. I'm sorry. Uh, and much humiliation. Uh huh. This is disrespect. What else? Depression. So he will expect depression. What else? Downcast looks. Downcast looks. She. <laughs> go ahead. And a broken heart. And a what? A broken heart. What else? These are kind Well, hold on. What's the first word? Depression. No, no. Uh, after broken heart, what's the first one starts with the T? These. These. So everything it just named. These are what? Are caused by. What? These are what? 
cause. Caused by what? A worthless wife. What kind of wife? Worthless. So, woman, if you're trying to twist that scripture, ask yourself, <laughs> are you a worthless wife? If the answer is no, then guess what? Leave the scripture alone, unless you're worth worthless. Read the verse again. Start back in 22 again. If a man is supported by his wife, mm -hmm. he Support? I don't want to support that. <laughs> Go ahead. Because <laughs> even when you look at Proverbs, uh... Proverbs uh, 31 when, uh, and 10 when it says um, who can find a virgin woman for a price of far above rubies the heart of a husband so say if you trust in her say he should have no need of spoil mm -hmm. that's gonna be no lack of gain you know what I'm saying he would he'll he'll she'll make sure he never she'll make sure he never becomes poor you don't never want to address that I have a lesson on it got a lesson on it but go ahead read the verse again 22 if a man is supported by his wife mm -hmm. he must expect tantrum mm, now remember she's a help me it says a help like to himself in the bible so we know that there has to be something to this here go ahead Ephraim Terry mm -hmm. and much humiliation uh-huh what else depression right downcast looks mm -hmm. and a broken heart mm -hmm. these are caused by a worthless wife read repeat that the what these are caused by a worthless wife say it louder these are caused by a worthless wife. Look in the camera and tell her. <laughs> These are, I can't do it. Put your mean face on, Ellen. <laughs> These are what? These are caused by a worthless wife. Shots fired. Keep reading. <laughs> uh, feeble of hand mm -hmm. and weak at the knees. Go ahead. Is the man whose wife fails to bring him happy? Ooh, we! I just want to be happy. What about your husband, though? Right. What's up with that happy wife, happy life? A happy husband? Mm, yeah. Huh? Go ahead. Sin began with the woman, mm. and because of her, we all die. Go ahead. Do not leave a leaky cistern to drip, or allow a worthless wife to say whatever she likes. Boy, y'all better cut that at the deck and stop being simps. Cut that at the deck. Brother, go ahead. If she does not accept your control, mm -hmm. bring the marriage to an end. Ooh wee, that's what it is. Anybody want to spite on that? Say anything on that? All right. They're pretty. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they're pretty much, you know, explains explain itself. itself. But this is the um, scripture that our sisters that don't know nothing can be manipulated to to use on for another sister, like. If you don't really know the scripture and you go for uh, counsel and they're going to read you this and be like, well, you know, if you take care of your husband, it's going to cause you all of these things. And take it way out of context. Yeah, too. that's not and what And the crazy part saying. about the other scriptures, which I know on my channel, I talk about the Exodus 21, mm -hmm. 10 and 11 scripture, the first Timothy 5 and 8, yep. uh, the context of what that actually really meant. So we can sing you those lessons too. And I got a few more I want to do too as well that they use as well, but... I'm going to keep quiet because, you know, I'm going to come with it. You know what I'm yeah, saying? So, so yeah. you know, this one is definitely, this one is definitely used. I've had sisters say, you know, using this one like, and I read it, I'm like, that's not what they're saying. Right. Yeah. And you understood that in English. Yeah. You got to read it in context. Right. They'll just read that one line and yeah. Yeah, so they'll use that and, you know, try to say, it, make it justifiable yeah. for a woman, a sister to leave her husband. Right. But at the end of the day. We definitely read. You can't leave. <laughs> right, and, and, and we're not saying brothers don't assist, uh, don't uh, help with your wife and things like that. But what we're saying is that's that don't give the woman the the way out. And don't say that. You know, that's not what that's saying. At all. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's what it is. You know. But yeah, and get your credit up, bro. Then she ain't got nothing to complain about. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, he ain't got no it's car. Let's get his credit out. Yeah, he ain't got no house. Well, let's get his credit out. Money. He ain't got no money. Let's get his credit out. <laughs> Ten credit cards, ten thousand dollar limits. Then, all right. All I gotta do is worry about credit card bill. Mm -hmm. There you go. Everything you need: food, gas, clothing, whatever, shelter. Yeah, get your credit up. It ain't about the money. It's about the credit. Ask your mama. Go ahead. <laughs> Whoever need help with take credit, please reach out. <laughs> you ain't got to even worry about that. <laughs> what we got next? Talk to me. Um, the next book we're going to go to is First Samuel. And we're going to read a little bit about Abigail. Mm. Um, because <coughs> she, even though her husband, her husband Nabal, he was a very uh, foolish man. Mm. Um, 
And it gives you that example because some women, you know, they may be with a man who's foolish, mm -hmm. but that still doesn't give you the right to leave your husband. It doesn't say when we just read in Romans that if your husband is foolish, then you can leave. No. So this is in particularly uh, we're gonna go up, we're gonna read about endurance, a woman who was in the fruits of the spirit, who was being long suffering, um, but she was still being that good wife and not that wicked woman. Mm -hmm. And I want to put one input on this too, for brothers, for your homework. This is for you. If you read First Samuel the uh, 18th chapter, all the way into this 25th uh, chapter, what she's learning. I'm a reading from. You will see that David. Wasn't even king during this time. I'm going to repeat that. He wasn't king. He was a poor man. As a matter of fact, you don't believe me? Remember I said read 1 Samuel 18 verse uh, 17 on down. And read it all the way straight through uh, chapter 25. Grab 1 Samuel 18 real quick and read the 23rd verse real quick. This is when um, Saul was uh, jealous of David. And basically he wanted to set him up to go kill the Philistines. And... Uh, he sent some people to go tell David, hey, go tell him you want the king's daughter-in-law. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know what I'm saying? I'll be king's son-in-law. You know what I'm saying? And you know, try to set him up. But there was something that David, there was something about David that we learned. What does it say? And, Verse 23. And Saul's servant spake those words in the ears of David. Like, go ahead, go holler him, tell him, hey, hey go ahead, marry. Go ahead. And David said, seemeth it to you a light thing. Like, you think this is a light thing? You is a, you saying it's a light thing? You taking this easy? Go ahead. To be a king's son-in-law. Right. Go ahead. Seeing that I am poor, I am a poor man. I'm a what? And lightly esteemed. I'm a poor what? Man. Poor man. What? Poor man. What? Poor man. So he was a poor man that said, "A lightly esteemed, he lightly regarded. He didn't have a reputation. He was just an average Joe." You know what I'm saying? So here it is. We see he was a poor man. You know what I'm saying? Which makes sense because we go to chapter 25. We learn about the story of. Nabal, which is the Hebrew word, which means fool, foolish man. We learned that he was trollish. Couldn't tell him nothing. He was hard, hard ass, hard to deal with. You know what I'm saying? And here it is in the beginning of the story. I don't know if you're gonna talk about it. He went to go beg another man for food. He couldn't even feed himself. But how many wives did he have at this point? He had already married Michal in that uh, chapter. <coughs> and then, of course, this is about to be his second wife, and he married another wife in this chapter as well. But then we learn in the last verse that he had gave his, uh, the Saul gave, had given his daughter, uh, David's wife, uh, to Fauti. You know what I'm saying? So then it's like, dang, you back at two wives now. But then we go to 2 Samuel, the third chapter, and read like maybe 14th on down, he went and got her back. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But during that time, he had like four or five of them. You know what I'm saying? So, and then when he finally got a house, what'd he do? He took more wives and more concubines. Yeah. Now, this lesson gonna be coming. It, it go to show you that whatever excuse this is trying to make, you get no pass. No pass, because we on your ass. You know what I'm saying? And trust me, I want all the smoke with this topic. Ask your mama. Go ahead. You better ask her. Better ask her. <laughs> <laughs> but go ahead, though. Where you want to start? Um, we're going to start at verse 18. Brothers, this don't mean go uh, be poor. <laughs> Somebody might read that. Well, fuck it, then. <laughs> she ain't it was poor. I'm not saying that, bro. Sisters, get out your feelings. I ain't saying that either. It's hard to work in these areas, y'all. Quick. Right. You're like, well, shit. Fuck it, then. <laughs> well, let's get it, though. Where we at? Verse 18. Come on with it. Oh, okay. I'll we'll get it. The Abigail man. Hold on, wait, look. Let, let me let me get a, a little bit of that. Starting two and three first, real quick. Verses two and three? Yeah. So you can kind of get the gist of who he was. Okay. Then Abigail made haste and took two. No, nah, verse two. Um, and there was a man uh -huh. in my own, my, my own yeah. whose okay. possessions were in Carmel, Carmel, which is the city. Go ahead. And the man was very great. So Nabal was what? Very great. He was very great. And what else? And he had 3,000 sheep uh -huh. and 1,000 goats. Uh huh. And he was shearing and sheep in Carmel. So look at that. He was very great and had 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats. Doom, doom. When a rich nigga won't you. <laughs> and your broke husband can't do nothing for you. <laughs> <laughs> so we see right there, hey, he was wealthy. Right? Go ahead. Now the name of the man was Nabal. Uh-huh. 
and the name of his wife Abigail. Abigail, uh huh. And she was a woman of good understanding. She was a woman of good understanding. What else? And of a beautiful countenance. There go that word countenance again. She had a beautiful appearance. Go ahead. But the man was Charlie. The man was what? Charlie. He was nice. Charlie. Cool. Charlie. Down to earth. Charlie. He was what? Charlie. Charlie. That's a hard ass. That's he's gruesome. He's a burden. He's the person that's you can't tell him nothing. You know what I'm saying? He he's very hard to deal with. You know what I'm saying? So that right there is most definitely a powerful word. Letting you know he was Charlie. Read that verse one more time. Now the name of the man was Nabal, and the name of his wife Abigail, and she was a woman of good understanding and of a beautiful countenance. But the man was churlish. Right, so he was stubborn, he was cruel, right? He was hard, heavy, sorrowful, if you will. Real stubborn. But go ahead. And evil in his doings. You see that? So you see that? He wasn't right. He was churlish and evil in his what? Doings. Go ahead. And he was of the house of Caleb. Go ahead. All right. So that's why I wanted y'all to see right there. Oh, matter of fact, no, do a little bit more because we're going to see. What did David say to him? You know what I'm saying? So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and read it. It said, And David heard in the wilderness that Nabal did shear his sheep. And David sent out ten young men. And David said to the young men, Get you up to Carmel, and go up to Nabal, and greet him in my name. And thus shall you say to him that liveth in what? Prosperity. Shalom, a peace be to you. And peace be to your house, and peace be peace be unto all that you have. Because remember, he had three thousand sheep and uh, I mean uh, three thousand sheep and a thousand goats. But he said, "Peace be to all that you have." Then he goes on to say, in verse uh, what was that seven? Yes. He says, "Uh, and now I've heard that you has shearers. Now your shepherds, which were with us, we heard them not. Like we didn't even heard them." Neither was there aught missing unto them all while they were in Carmel. And it says, Ask your young men. They'll show you. I mean, they'll prove it to you. Well, for let the young men find favor in your eyes, for we come in a good day. Give. What is he telling him to do? Give. What is he telling him to do? Give. Give. He begging, as we say today. I pray thee, whatsoever cometh into your hand unto your servants and unto your son David or David. And when, it, and when David's young men came, they spoke to Nabal according to all those words in the name of David and stopped or ceased. And Nabal answered David's servants and said, Who is David? And who is the son of Jesse? Now, if you read uh, Isaiah 11, you know what I'm saying? You learn he's also the son of Jesse. Uh, but anyway, David, the son of Jesse, he said, There'll be many servants nowadays that break away every man from his master. That goes back to Deuteronomy 23rd chapter. If you, uh, in other words, if you were mistreated by your master, you flee. You know what I'm saying? So he was talking about that. He felt that David, whoever he is coming here begging, you probably some homeless negro. You probably some homeless negro that ran away from your master. This is what he's saying right there. Your boss, who you supposed to be working for for six years. But anyway, look at what he says in verse 11. He says, "Should I then take my bread?" That also comes from Hebrew word lechem, which means food. So can I take my bread and my what? Water and my flesh, flesh, meat, <laughs> so in my flesh that I have what? Killed, animals dying, that I have killed for my shearers and given unto men who I know not whence they be, who I don't even know where you came from, I don't even know you. So David's young men turned away and went again and came and told them all these things. And David said unto his young man, what did he say? Gird you up every man his sword. And they girded every man his sword. And David also girded on his sword. And they went up after David. About 400 men and 200 of bold by the stuff. So you see right here at this point, David about ready to kill him now. Like, hold on, man. We done treated your people right. We didn't touch your stuff. Man, we came in peace. We hungry. Feed us. And you want to sit like that and act like that? Remember the script said that he was churlish and he was evil in his doings. You get what I'm saying? So here it is. He didn't want to do right by them. So we're talking a man who couldn't even feed himself. More than one woman though? But God was still with him. Sheesh. What would we call him today? Bum, hobo, right? We would say that. You know what I'm saying? We would definitely say that. You know, I was watching a video of some brother, I forgot his name, but they was asking, 
the question was asked if you broke should you pursue another woman or a woman <coughs> and I like the way he broke it down he said there's more than one type of broke he was saying one type of broke is you got cash then he said a trade like well you can take something book <laughs> you can take something and you can make a stream of revenue of income you know what I'm saying so <coughs> <laughs> but then he also said another one was credit you know what I'm saying so uh because he know and understand the importance of credit, you know what I'm saying? So he was saying, like, if you ain't got those, then yeah, brother, you're broke. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, even if you were, you know what I'm saying, we see that this man right here was a poor man. You know what I'm saying? Homeless on the run from Saul, but the most high was still with him. But we'll learn later that Nabal ended up dying. You know what I'm saying? But go ahead, though. Do your thing. I just wanted to bring that out. Read the chapter, y'all, but go ahead. What verse you want to start in? Um, we were gonna start at verse eighteen. All right, come on with it. So I ain't cut your uh your teaching. Twenty five and eighteen, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, okay. come on. Matter of fact, start at seventeen. Because okay. remember, he was churlish. Go ahead. Now, therefore, know and consider what thou wilt do, for evil is determined against our master. Because David was finna go and kill him. Go ahead. And against all his household. Uh huh. For he is such a son of Bel Belial, Belial, the damn devil. Bella. Go ahead. Okay. That a man cannot speak to him. A man can't tell him nothing. Because he was churlish and evil in his doings. Now, the floor is yours. Then Abigail made haste and took 200 loaves and two bottles of wine and five sheep ready dressed and five measures of parched corn and a hundred clusters of raisins and 200 cakes of figs and laid them on asses. And she said unto her servants, Go on before me. Behold, I come after you. But she told not her husband Nabal. And it was so as she rode on the ass that she came down by the covert of the hill. And behold, David and his men came down against her and she met them. Now David has said, surely in vain have I kept all that is that this fellow hath in the wilderness so that nothing was missed of all that pertained unto him and he hath requited me evil for good so and more also do God unto the enemies of David if I leave of all that pertain to him by the morning light any that pisseth against the wall and when Abigail saw David she hasted and lighted off the ass and tell and fell before David on her face and bowed herself to the ground and fell at his feet and said upon me my lord upon me let this iniquity be and let thine hand make me. I pray thee speak in thy audience and hear the words of thy handmaid right. Lord you want to say something too? okay okay go ahead you can go ahead okay okay let not my lord I pray thee regard this man of Bilal mm -hmm. even Nabal so we see right here even though he, she, remember she was a good woman of understanding right mm -hmm. so we see right here she's pleading on the case of her husband Nabal because David now was finna kill him because they obviously were hungry they couldn't feed themselves so when you read chapters 18 on through you learn that what he was homeless he was on a run and there was a great beef between the house of Saul and the house of David you know what I'm saying? So his people was uh, becoming mightier and mightier. David people was becoming, uh, I mean, David people was back waxing mightier and mightier. As you read in 2 Samuel 3 and like 1 and 2. And then the house of Saul was becoming weaker and weaker. So that was that great beef that was going between them. But even though he was a hard ass and you couldn't tell him nothing, you couldn't deal with him, she still was in order. She wanted to save her husband's life. You know what I'm saying? So we remember she was a woman of good understanding. So she obviously had the wisdom enough to know if she would have did anything, then her the whole family would have got killed. You know what I'm saying? So we see right here, that's talking and doing. She could have easily just threw in the towel and just be like, you know what? Screw him. You know what I'm saying? Because remember, we learned that he was evil in his doings. He was churlish. And we learned that what? Could nobody tell him nothing. But that woman stayed there. She stayed with her husband and stood by his side and still pleaded for his case. Some of you women would have let your husband die. Just so you can be like, ah, oh, nah, nigga. Well, that's that. A bleep, bleep, bleep. That's all, folks. You know what I'm saying? But that woman still stayed in order. She still stayed in line. And she pleaded on the behalf of her husband, 
even though he was wicked and foolish in his doings. So sisters, that should be literally motivation. Don't be so quick to throw in the towel. You know what I'm saying? The good old microwave generation. When things don't go your way, you know what I'm saying? And you don't, uh, you, you don't like the way how he may have did something or said something, maybe yelled at you. It got in your feelings and what you do. You leave and you gone. You know what I'm saying? So let that be motivation. She didn't just throw in the towel. She didn't just throw in, you know what I'm saying? She didn't just throw in the towel. But go ahead. What verse you in? 25. 25. Jump down to 38. Okay. Yeah, jump down to 38. And it came to pass about 10 days after. No, 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 no. What are we going to do? We're going to, uh, 34. Let's 34. 34. Yeah. For in very deed, as the Lord God of Israel living, mm -hmm. which hath kept me back from hurting thee, uh -huh. except thou hast hasted and come to meet me, mm -hmm. surely there had not been left unto Nabal by the morning like any that pissing against the wall. So you said he was going to lose everything. Had it not been for his woman. Go ahead. So David received of her hand. Mm -hmm. That which he, she had brought him. Right. And said unto her. Go up in peace to thine house. Right. See I have hearkened to thy voice. Mm -hmm. And have accepted thy person. So you see that? Go ahead. So she saved his life. Go ahead. And Abigail came to Nabal. Right. Remember it's her husband. Go ahead. And behold. He held a feast in his house. So look at it. He ain't, look. He don't even know he was going to die. He in the house kicking it. Go ahead. Like the feast of a king. So that's the miracle because he was a, he was very great. So he ended up kicking it like he a whole king out here. Go ahead. And the ball's heart was merry within him. So he was enjoying himself. He was turned up. His heart was merry, cheerful within himself. Go ahead. For he was very drunk. He was very sober. Drunk. Drunk. Go ahead. Wherefore, she told him nothing less or more until the morning light so right there so at that point she's like look he drunk i'm gonna just wait until the morning the morning light because you got different parts of the day that's another different topic so she said you know what i'm gonna just wait till the morning i'm never just gonna let this i'm just let this go go ahead but it came to pass in the morning right? when the wine was gone when out what of the bar, when the wine was gone out of the bar it done left the system <laughs> go ahead and his wife had told him these things. Remember, because David was finna kill him. Go ahead. That his heart died within him, mm -hmm. and he became as a stone. Man, he's like when you freeze up, like, yeah. like dang, like what? Are you serious? That dude was finna come back and kill me. But go ahead. And I came to pass about ten. And days, it came to pass. And it came to pass. I'm sorry. About ten days after. How many days after? Ten days. So remember, he was just trying to get fed by Nabal. How many days passed? Ten. Ten. That's not even two weeks to that. Go ahead. That the Lord smote the ball that he died. So the Lord ended up killing them, brothers. Let that be also a warning to you. If you want to be churlish and evil in your doings, the most high I'll take your ass up out of here, Negro. And that'll be somebody else's wife. You want that to happen, brothers? No? Okay, well, get your SHIT together. And I mean shit. Well, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> And when David heard that Nabal was dead. Nabal was what? Dead. What did he say? He said, blessed be the Lord. That'd be like, oh, praise to the most high. Go ahead. They have pleaded the cause of my reproach from the hand of Nabal. Uh-huh. And have kept his servant from evil. Because remember, David was going to go and kill him. But the Lord obviously killed him. And he stopped David for doing such evil. So he's saying, oh, praise to the most high for that. Because I was going to smoke this Negro. You know what I'm saying? He kept his servant from doing evil. Go ahead. For the Lord hath returned the wickedness of Nabal upon his own head. He reaped what he sowed. Go ahead. And David sent and communed with Abigail. Oh, let's see what he say. To what? To take her to him to wife. Now let's see if she was like, no, you hobo broke ass Negro. Don't you don't ain't you married to me, Carl? Don't you already got a woman? Mm -hmm. You poor, you just got done asking my man for something. I just got done feeding you. Homeless broke ass. Let's see what happened. Let's see what she said. And when the servants of David were come to Abigail to Carmel, uh -huh. they what spake you? unto her, saying, David sent us unto thee to take thee to him to help to wife. So he wouldn't go relate the message. Hey, look, go holler at her. You know what I'm saying? Kind of like if I tell one of y'all, hey, go get her number. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I'm good for it. But go ahead. And she arose. She did what? Bow, she arose. And then what she do? And bowed herself. No, she her looked face. down on him. What she do? She bowed herself on her face to uh -huh. the earth. To the what? The earth. So she bowed herself to the ground. Jeez. 
Go ahead. And said, Behold, let thy handmaid be a servant. Be a wash, what? Be a servant. A servant. Go ahead. To what? To wash the feet of the servants of my Lord. What she called him? Her Lord. She called David her what? Lord. Lord a dome. Oh, I doubt y'all look that up, ladies and gents. I don't hurt your feelings. But go ahead. What happened? And Abigail hates. She what? Hates. No, she took her time. No, she hates. She hasted. She in a her up. Go ahead. And a rose that rolled up on an ass. Uh huh. With five damsels. So that's a naera, which is young women. Go ahead. Of hers that went after her. So I mean they were trailing her. They were following her. You know what I'm saying? They on this journey now. Go ahead. And she went after the messengers of day. So they were following him. What happened? And became his wife. And became what? His wife. His what? His wife. Friend. His wife. But he was broke. His what? His wife. Go ahead. David also. David took, what? David also took. A Hinoam. A Hinoam. Of Jezreel. Of Jezreel. Uh huh. And they were also both of them his wives. Jeez. Both of them. So he took her and her friend. Jeez. Ladies. Jeez. Woo. Well, all right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? And we learned that uh, Michal, Saul's daughter, he had uh, was given to Fauci. Matter of fact, let's grab that real quick. Cause somebody be like, I ain't never read that. Grab 2 Samuel 3 real quick. 2 Samuel the third chapter. And when y'all read verses 1 through like 7, uh, you will name, I mean, you will see David's uh, wise and concubine. Oh, uh, yeah, David's wise and things like that. It had about six of them. You know what I'm saying as well. So that'll be your homework, one through seven. But jump to verse 14 real quick. It says, Well, I'll read it. What y'all getting at? It says, And David sent messages unto Ephesheth, Saul's son. And remember, he was beefing with Saul. Saying, Deliver me or give me my wife Nikah, which I espouse or engage or betroth to me for a hundred foreskins of the Philistines. And Ephesheth sent and took her from her husband, even from Fauti, the son of Laish. And it said, and her husband went uh, went with her along weeping behind her to uh, Bahori. <coughs> oh, baby, that's my baby. <laughs> then said unto Abner unto him, go and return. Like, get out of here. And he returned. So David went and got her back. You know what I'm saying? And you see, he had like six women at that time, and he still wasn't king. Boy, look, don't even. Remember, Saul was king at this point. He was king at this point. He still didn't even have a house mm -hmm. at this point. And he had children and wives, according to verses 1 through 7. Let's go to two chapters after this. Chapter 5. Let's look at verse 11 real quick. Don't well, get me started. It says, verse 11, it says, The Hiram king of Tyree sent messages to David, and cedar trees, and carpenters, and masons, not the fraternity, of the occupation. And they built David a what? They built David a house. Somebody else built him a house. Mm -hmm. Now that he had all these responsibilities and the Lord was still with him. But look at what happened right here after he got a house. And David acknowledged or perceived or understood clearly at this point. Said that the Lord established him king over Israel. So this is when David finally understood. Oh snap, hold on. I'm the king. And it said, and that he exalted his kingdom for his people Israel's sake. Now, what's the first thing David did? Read verse 13, please. And David took him more concubines. Wow. And wives. Wow. Out of Jerusalem. After what? After he was come from. He brought. Because he had wives in those cities too. So he went from one city, he had wives, and then he went to this city. Jeez. And different area codes. <laughs> Area code. Yeah, so that's what it was. But the most high was still with David. Sheesh, go ahead. And there were yeah. their sons and daughters born to David. One last thing. First uh Kings 15. I'm gonna go ahead and read it, verse 4 and 5. It says, And nevertheless, for David's sake, did the Lord God give him a lamp in Jerusalem to set up his son after him to establish Jerusalem. Verse 5, and it says. Because David did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord and turned not and turned not aside from anything that he commanded him to my God all the days of his life, save meaning except only in the matter of the situation of Uriah the Hittite. So the only thing David did wrong was he took another man's wife, 2 Samuel 11 chapter. 
But you'll learn that in my lesson on my uh, on my channel. I, I go into depth on that. But here it is. They were wrong about nothing, nothing that he did except for that situation. So was he wrong because he was poor and getting married? No. No. But that's again, that's another topic though. But we see Abigail was a, a woman who endured having a foolish husband. Had faith. And guess what happened to his foolish behind? The Lord killed him in 10 days. And she became another man's wife. And her partner. <laughs> what else? What's next? Uh, the next scripture, uh, last scripture we're going to read, um, it's going to be James 1 and 12. Let's get it. You dealing with this or you want me to deal with it? Okay. All right, come on with it. Blessed is the man that endured temptation. Mm. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, mm -hmm. which the Lord has promised to them that love him. So it lets you know that it's a blessing <laughs> to those who endure temptation. Mm -hmm. um, that trial, <laughs> that error. Yeah, so when you're tried in the fire, you don't just give up. <clears throat> and be like those, you know, the runaway wives who just give in and just, you know, just, they don't endure. They don't have their fruits of the spirit. There's no long suffering there. Um, and then when you do endure, you will receive that crown of life. Crown of life. So when... It's judgment day, and you're being judged, and the most high weighs, you know, and in a balance, you know, are you, were you being still submissive to your husband? Were you still loving him? Were you still reverencing him? Doing all those things, um, and again, enduring, being long-suffering, then you'll get that crown of life because you were doing what thus said the most high. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, so where are we going? Okay, so the next um, chapter we're going to go to, well, book, I'm sorry, is Ecclesiasticus, mm -hmm. chapter 2, and we're going to read verses 1 and 2. Come on with it. Trial, temptation. Come on with it. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord. Mm, so when you want to finally start serving the Lord and doing right. <laughs> Prepare thy soul for temptation. Mm, prepare yourself because trials is going to come in other words. Go ahead. Set thy heart uh, aright. No, set your heart on wickedness. Aright. Mm -hmm. And constantly endure. And make not haste in time of trouble. Don't, get, don't, don't be ready to quit in the time of trouble. Hit that verse 5 real quick. For gold is tried in the fire, mm -hmm. and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Mm -hmm. Even gold is tried in the fire. See that? That's dealing with trial. Even gold is. And what happens when it is finished? It comes out perfect, looking good and shiny. All right. Did you want to say something on that? I don't know what that was up to that. All right. What's the last one? First Peter 3 and 1. Okay. Let's get it. All right. Likewise, <coughs> wives, be in subjection to your own husband. What does subjection mean? Submissive. Submission. Go ahead. That if any obey not the word. So if any husband is not obeying the word, he ain't doing what he's supposed to be doing. Go ahead. They also may without the word be won by the count of the conversation of the wives. Mm -hmm. Conversation means what, y'all? Behavior. Behavior. Behavior, your conduct, your demeanor, your actions. So at the end of the day, you can still, your husband can be won over. Not, you know, again, we just can't up and leave because we feel like it. We can't up and leave because, you know, he won't let us wear weave or wear lashes. We can't up and leave because we want to get drunk all the time and, and go party and we can't up and leave because the wind blow this way and the wind blow that way. We can't up and leave because the sex ain't good. We we, we can't do it. Hi. Sucks to be you if it ain't good. <laughs> Get the book. <laughs> Get the book. Chapter 10. So, yeah, we, you know, this is definitely inspired sisters. Like I said, our wicked sisters. Of course, we're not, we not talking. And if you fit these bills, then we talking to you. Thanks. But if not, then if the shoe fit word, if it's too tight, take it off. And if you don't like it, fuck you. Wow. I didn't say that, but okay. I right. See. <laughs> 
shoe fit wearing. If it's too tight, take it off. You know, uh, we gotta endure. And you know, I say all the time, these are little tests. Mm -hmm. If you can't endure this, how are you gonna endure when the Messiah come back? Right? How? You not. You not. What if you are called to to endure or you're, to improve a task in order to get into the kingdom? You're not gonna be able to endure it. Like if you're not. It's not. You're not. <laughs> if you can't handle this, right? So sisters, we gotta we gotta get it together. And just remember what you would what you're what you're putting out what you're putting out. Your kids, your daughter seeing, your niece is seeing, right. your granddaughter seeing. So that's around you seeing. They seeing. It. And you wicked sisters that are giving this wicked advice. May most high have mercy on your soul. Thanks. <laughs> your day is not filled. Yeah. It's not. You are I insecure. Do me a favor. In the rock um twenty six in the Oxford version of the Bible real quick. Yes. Cause um, cause that was y'all last scripture, right? Yeah, yeah. I want to get one more real quick. Go back to the apocrypha, yeah. guys. Ecclesiasticus, real quick. Yeah. Okay. Ecclesiasticus, chapter twenty-six, real quick. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, start in verse twenty-four, yeah. twenty-three. In the book, or nah. Uh, you want to read it? Okay. Mm -hmm. 23 mm -hmm. a godless woman is a good match for a lawless husband mm -hmm. so that part a, a lawless husband meaning we ain't keeping no commandments go ahead a godly one for a man who fears the lord mm -hmm. i fear the lord look at my wives go ahead a brazen woman courts disgrace mm -hmm. but a virtuous daughter is modest even before her husband come on a headstrong woman is a shameless bitch whoa whoa say it again what they say <laughs> A headstrong woman. Is I'm a headstrong. Bitch. You know, you hard head. But read that again. A, a headstrong woman is a shameless bitch. Spell that. B i t c a. Oh, that's so. That's what it says. Yes. Jeez, read that one more time. A headstrong woman is a shameless bitch. A headstrong woman is a shameless bitch. That needs to be a song. <laughs> Boy, hold on. Hey, say that one more time. A headstrong woman is a shameless bitch. A headstrong woman is a shameless bitch. Shameless bitch. Shameless bitch. Hey, a headstrong woman is a shameless bitch. Let me tell you about the head. Let me tell you. She ain't kidding. Wow. Okay. Hey, brothers. Hey, come on. One more time. Sing it with us. Say it one more time. A headstrong woman is a shameless bitch. A headstrong woman is a shameless bitch. Shameless bitch. Shameless bitch. Hey, headstrong, 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 woman is a shameless bitch. She don't give a fuck. She be shameless shit. Can't give a fuck if she a shameless bitch. Yeah, shameless shit. She's a shameless bitch. Wow. Let me know. Right. No, I'm sure it's a time. Go ahead. Read again. Wow. A headstrong okay, woman is a shameless bitch. bitch. <laughs> but the modest <laughs> one fears the Lord. <laughs> hey, I would never look at that verse the same. Every time I hear that, boy. Yeah. Shout out to my cousin Be Hood, man. The name Be Hood gonna live forever. Right. Get that beat for me, cuz. Uh, I'm gonna drop the track. Wow. <laughs> wow. I'm gonna drop the track. You're really gonna be on the <laughs> Feature right. Jew the Mac. Hey. And I can right. see him now. He probably gonna he probably gonna talk and hey, let's do that song. Right. Straight up. <laughs> Shout out to the Maj man. But uh yeah, so was that it? Yes, if that's what you Yeah, so we're gonna do the other videos. Um oh. I guess we'll when you, well, we'll talk about we have a meeting, you know, we always have meetings and things like that. Y'all learn about that in the future too. So, um, because uh, I know them, they ain't a big dog like me, so I know y'all, y'all, y'all get sleepy. They go to sleep around this mug. Right. So, uh, um, yeah. <laughs> long days, long days, because our days are filled. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literature, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So, uh, like you hear, strong woman is a shameless bitch. Just such a shameless bitch. Anyway, yeah, so, um, yeah, um, we do have some homework. Uh, for you ladies um, 
some homework as far as finding where men gave their wives wife or wives you know a written contract as far as marriage because that's one of the reasons a lot of women you know will leave their marriage because they'll say oh we were never married right. he never gave me any uh a dowry yeah. <laughs> no Ooh, kind yeah of. we did a video on that <laughs> yeah. on the dowry topic uh, it's actually coming too yeah. okay cool yeah we need to do that and we're going to talk <laughs> about that toby because they're like they're on the toby the seventh chapter yeah. oh yeah he Took was, yeah, to the he was never my wife because I mean, oh she, yeah we on your is ass we'll go he ahead. was never my husband because he never gave me any kind of paperwork right. you know so we know that your word is bond and well, yeah, you made a day, covenant with him. You man. made a covenant with him. Right. Off your lips you said that man was your husband right. and you wanted right. to do all these things, you know, for him. But when things went south and didn't go your way, then it's time you know, now it's time for me to go and you know, he never gave me no paperwork right. anyway, so no, wow. he's not mine. So I want this is the homework and it's a challenge for you sisters. I we want you to fight put it in the comments below, whatever. Let us know what you find as far as him saying, "Hey, I want you to be my wife." A headstrong woman is a shameless bitch. And they're put sitting that, down put that in the comments, y'all. No, it's not. <laughs> yeah, put that in the comments. I might send y'all a free book. I know. <laughs> <laughs> free. Like we want to know this because this doctrine is getting out of hand. You know, because you're Western, you still have that Westernized mindset right. where you think that going down to the courts and you getting this piece of paper. Because at the end of the day, with that piece but of paper, you still gonna leave. Paper, they still leave. They still gonna leave. Still gonna leave. Yeah. Like I tell brothers, I'm like, look, bro, let me tell you something, my nigga. <laughs> if she don't listen to the word of God, what make you think right. she's gonna listen to this piece of paper? Right. Boy, shut up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, ball that piece of paper up and throw it in their yeah. face and walk if, out if the that door. If that, if that, if that have needs, James waiting in the car. If that needs to be your mediator, oh, bro, look, there's only one mediator. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So we're gonna go to First Timothy two and five. Mm-hmm. Scoot on in. Go ahead. For there is one God uh -huh. and one mediator. How many mediators? One. That's a link between. Go ahead. Between God and man and the man Christ Jesus. That's so you know Yeshua Hamashiach, Hamashiach, Yahawashah, you know, whatever you want to call them. That's a whole other topic. But anyway, that we won't discuss. You know what I'm saying? You know, we try to keep doctrine off the table. Um, but anyway, yeah. So a headstrong woman is a shameless bitch. Hey, so the first feet, the first woman that comments, a headstrong woman is a shameless bitch. We're gonna send you a free book. You know what I'm saying? You gotta send us your inf your info or whatnot. I'm gonna send you a free book. You know what I'm saying? But you gotta say it and say something funny and make us laugh. Matter of <laughs> fact, now that's what we gonna do. Whoever got the funniest comment that make us laugh on that. Then we we are gonna vote, and then we are gonna send them a uh, uh, a uh, a okay. uh, a free book. You know what I'm saying? But if we don't know you, you have to have something to where we have to reach you. You know, put your email or something. Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. So yeah, you you get a free book. You know what I'm saying? So a headstrong woman is the same. <laughs> it's for the sisters. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Don't be one of those headstrong women. Because you're going to be alone, a shameless bitch. Alone as a very by Israel. <laughs> yeah. Ah, yes, yes. And then, <laughs> to, be, to be honest, like, <laughs> women set themselves up for failure. And I'm going to tell you why and how. You leave your husband. you got to be out here. you got to commit adultery because you're not going to stay single. you got to commit adultery. You're going to be out here getting cracked. <laughs> and. Like an egg. You can have some men that you haven't done nothing, so they can't give you a bill of divorce. Right. Mm -hmm. They they can't leave you, so you are miserable. Yeah. Is that right? Or maybe you're not miserable. Maybe you find somebody, but then when you get to judgment day, <laughs> he gonna say, "I never knew thee." Right. <laughs> he get tossed to the lake of fire. That's for committing adultery. That's Matthew chapter seven. I don't want to hear them words. I don't know about you. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Let's okay. grab that real quick. Matthew chapter 7. Somebody grab that real quick. Matthew chapter 7. And we're going to start in verse 21. Let's read that. Um, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord. Or Master, Master. Shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. So just because you acknowledge him don't mean you're getting in. 
But he that doeth the will of my father. Only those that do the will of the father. Psalms 40 and 8. Well, go ahead. Which is in heaven. Which is where? In heaven. Come on. Many will say to me in that day. Not few. Not some. But many will say to me in that day. What? Lord, Lord. Have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we not prophesied in your name? Your fame? Your authority? Your character? Your reputation? Huh? Go ahead. In thy name have cast out devils. Because there are people who can have those abilities. Casting out demons. Just because you're doing it don't mean you're getting in. Keep that in mind. Just because you can do that. That's good though. Absolutely. But that don't mean you're getting in though. At all. What else? In, in thy name done many wonderful works. Done many wonderful works. We Many wonderful works. Come on. And then will I profess and say Then when I tell them, because he said many, what did he say? I never knew you. No, I always knew you. I never knew you. I never knew you. So here it is. You done prophesied in his name. You were able to cast out demons. You done many wonderful works. All these good things that you did. And for him to turn around and say what? I never knew you. I never knew you. Go ahead. Depart from me. Get away from me. Ye that work iniquity. Ye that work what? Iniquity. What is iniquity? Let's go to 1 John chapter 5 real quick. Somebody give me 1 John 5 and somebody give me 1 John 3. So it says, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Or you that's doing iniquity. What's iniquity? 1 John chapter 5 verse 19. What does it say? Man. Because iniquity is unrighteousness. 5 and 19? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we know no, that... No, verse 17, I mean. Okay. All unrighteousness is sin. All unrighteousness is sin. Hold that. Somebody give me 1 John 3 and 4? Because mm -hmm. iniquity is unrighteousness, right, y'all? Mm -hmm. Something that's unrighteous. Go ahead. Whosoever committed sin transgress transgresses also the law. They break the law. I mean, the mm -hmm. rules. For sin is the transgression of the law. It's the breaking of the law, ladies and gents. How does he feel about people who do iniquity? The last one, Psalms 5 and 5. This is when David was praying to the Most High. And let's see how, and what he said about those who are workers of iniquity. Starting 4, 4 and 5. Let's grab 5 and 4? Uh, chapter 5, my bad. Yeah. 5 and verse 4. And hit 5. For thou art not a God that hath pleasure in wickedness. So he said, you're not even a God that has pleasure in that. That has delight in that. Go ahead. Neither shall evil dwell with thee. Right. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. So he's saying look to the Most High, look, the foolish, they're not even going to be able to stand in your sight. Go ahead. Thou hatest all. He said what? Thou, thou meaning you. What? Hatest. Which hate, so you hate. All workers. Some workers. All workers. Only the workers he likes. All workers. Said the Lord hates all workers, meaning what? People. Of what? Iniquity. Of iniquity. So don't be the one who God hates, sisters. You can be the one who God hates. You know what I'm saying? And please remember, a headstrong woman is a shameless bitch. Sh shameless bitch. Sh shameless bitch. <laughs> Woo, anything before we go? <laughs> All right, so they can get the book from where? Propolybook.com. Well, with that being said, ladies and gents, until next time, we say Shalom. with us and grow with us as well but like i said a lot of people you know and that's and i and i think the most high that's nothing that we've ever experienced where we like oh y'all know y'all just doing that for the camera yes, and, and i i'm not thank god that we never experienced that what's your name what's your name you gotta talk to the
Is it beat up? Does it?